right, listen, I'm back, I'm tiny, I'm small, I've had a virus, I had Vegas AIDS, and uh, we're back training. Two things. So today, I kind of wanted to reflect on the Olympia, um, give you a little bit of an insight to, I suppose, my thoughts about it. Um, secondly, we have a gift for Maddie, because you know I like gaming. I told her she needs to play Final Fantasy VII, eight and nine, so we've got Final Fantasy VII and eight here for Maddie to try. So that's for you, Maddie. Um, so anyway, yeah, guys, um, really, to be fair, I'm still in a position where I'm just trying to ease back into the gym. I'm not super motivated. I'm kind of a little bit tired still, a bit jet lagged still from Vegas. It's, uh, what is it, the second today? Is it third already? It's the third of the month already. So it's the third of January. Um, I've had a little bit of time to reflect. Um, I'm, I'm pretty in short before we get into the session, I start spilling. I'm pretty happy with how everything went. You know, currently number 16, best bodybuilder in the world. You know, I'm in that top 20. Uh, legitimate 16th as well. One point less on the score than the other 16s. So I can't really be unhappy. It was a good year. Um, obviously, we always want to do better. Um, and I will do better. But right now, I'm going through a phase where I've just got out of a very busy year, very hard year in terms of stress on the body. So I've got to be quite kind to myself. So we're going to be back in training today. I'm, I've started my split that I said I'm going to start. But today, we're not going to do a lot of exercises. But we're going to treat this like this was a discussion Maddie and I had, and Maddie had a really good thought. She asked me what my opinion is of your, let's say, top three exercises that are uh, ha must haves. So, if you're training legs, what are the must have exercises? So, today I'm going to do three exercises for legs, um, and they are going to be my must haves. I'll kind of explain why they are as we do them. You know, this kind of thing, as I'm doing something, it comes to the brain. Um, so, yeah, we're back in Kings. Um, I've got my Olympia tracksuit on to celebrate the year because we had a successful year. Got my Olympia medal with me just to show you that this is the physical manifestation of many years of hard work. I know to some it's just a bit of metal. Some people just throw it on the floor and say it's a piece of shit. But to me, there's a lot that goes behind that. I've got two of these now um, at home and I could always look at them and say, you know, I managed to be on that Olympia stage um, among the best bodybuilders in the world and uh, I belonged up there through the hard work and the, I suppose, dedication over the years. So, guys, I'm just a normal kid from Carshorton, made it to the Olympia stage multiple times. If you have a dream and you want to get to the Olympia stage, I've got this physically in my hand. This isn't, you know, this isn't a dream. It's real. You can have this as well. You just got to work your ass off, stay dedicated and be true. So, let's get some legs done and uh, we'll just catch up as we do it. Like I say, three exercises today that are fundamentals for legs. So, see you in the gym. Rightio, exercise one. We're gonna do the lion hamstring curl to start. Uh, the reason being, hamstrings are the, probably the, the one muscle group that would be most neglected on typically most people's leg workout. A lot of people come in the gym, they jump on a leg extension, they do a leg press, they're pretty fatigued. By the time they've done the quads, legs are tired. They do some hamstrings at the end, but it's kind of half assed So, I personally would rather come in and do hamstrings first. I think it's a really good way to warm up the knee as well. I feel like the knee gets less stress on it when you warm it up from behind rather than in front. So for me personally, I would always, always, always advise coming in and picking a hamstring movement first. Uh, why lion hamstring curl? No real reason. You could do a seated curl, you could do a standing curl. As long as you're doing some form of hamstring curl, if you were limited to three movements, you'll be absolutely fine. I just find this very, very comfortable um, and a great machine to build a brace against and really contract the hamstring. So we're going to do two sets on here today. We're going to do one set that's a loading set, which is going to be a lower rep range, anywhere from that kind of six to 10. And then we'll do a second set where we can kind of reduce the weight, uh, which you would call a back off set, which is anything above that 10 rep range, all the way up to possibly 20. So real basic stuff. And that's it, a couple of sets of hamstring curl. In regards to warm ups, I know this is an age old question, Always start with the lightest weight possible and do as many reps as possible. And then as you warm up, obviously you increase the weight, but you can afford to then reduce the amount of reps you do. What you don't want to do is overexert on the way up to your working set. So let's say I've just done 10 to 12 reps. My second warm up will probably be half that. Third one will probably be even half that again. And then you'll probably just do a couple of single rep uh, warm ups before you do your loading set. Another little tip on here as well. If you want to fill your uh, abductors work, Go for a slightly narrower stance with your heels. 
try and have your knees more together. Uh, when I trained hamstrings of Leroy and Anf, Leroy made me put my um, knees close together and I felt a lot more tension on my inner hamstring. So if you're trying to hit that particular part, uh, you can lean a little bit of bias towards that by just driving your knees together and contracting your abductors. So again, just gonna warm up. Don't exert too much energy, save it for your working sets. Today I'm only gonna be working in like a, a 75, 80% of max kind of effort because I'm just trying to get back into the gym. Um, we've just moved over to like HRT dosages on my supplements. So body's not really in a position to recover as well as it could. Bear in mind I was ill as well. So just being very sensible. Look at your training from a standpoint of where are you currently? Not where is everyone else? Not where should you be? Where are you in reality? If you've been unwell over the Christmas period, or if you've been uh, affected by something that's causing some sort of stress, be kind to yourself and understand that this is long term and you have all the time in the world to kind of progress. So it's always better to start somewhere and have room to go up than to try and throw yourself in too much and then have to come down. And that's how I'm treating it right now. And this looks very casual because it is casual because we're easing back into training. I'm not gung-ho, I don't come straight back to training. Grrr. If you could do that, do that. That ain't me. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got. Nice. We're good. No cheat reps. Um, my principle to train is when I get to a point where I know the next rep's gonna involve a lot of other muscle groups, a lot of shifting, I just don't go there now. So I could have probably thrown out another four reps. They would have been messy. They would have been somewhat beneficial, but I'd rather really, really perfect my form and just get stronger on that. So that's why I stop with good form rather than trying to chase those extra reps. Okay, so we did eight reps on the stack. We're gonna reduce the weight now from 80 to 60. And we're really just aiming for anything above that rep range. Ideally 15 would be nice. So same strict type form. And uh, keep yourself nice and flat to the bench. No hip elevation. Contract the hamstring hard. Let's try and get 15 reps. <laughs> if I count right, I think that's 15. It might be 40. <laughs> Perfect. So that's it for hamstrings today. Direct work. We'll do a, um, a direct quad exercise and then we'll... Um, follow up with a squat variation. So while we're here, we'll we all jump onto the uh, leg extension, the prime one. Leg extension, obviously you guys are very aware of the prime leg extension, meaning uh, you have three loading points. You'll see a lot of people do different load points. Because I do leg extension early in a workout, I tend to keep the load all on the middle pin. Uh, the middle pin just means that the load stays consistent throughout the entire rep range. If you want to load up pin, the up pin will load at the beginning and drop off at shortened contraction. If you load the bottom pin, it will start light and then as you shorten the contraction, it will get heavier. So really the two you want to take advantage of are these two. In your earlier sets, you want to be loading here and then as you progress, it'd be wise to start loading distribution between the two so that you can still get that contraction nice and short. We'll probably do one set with the loaded in the middle and then one set with a, a, a load shared between the top and middle so that we can get that contraction short after doing the first initial set. The only thing I will say is that when I do a leg extension, I purposely try to almost tilt back to allow my upper quad to get a bit more tension. So I try to stretch my upper quad from the get-go. And the only way you can really do that is if you're sitting in a seat, you kind of elevate the hips slightly and lean back so you get some tension along there the rec fem, so that when you fully contract, you get a very, very large amount of contractile quality up in this part. If I'm sitting forward, if my hips are forward and I contract like that, I don't really feel this part. So if I tilt back a little bit, I get more here. Um, whether that really does help develop that area or not, I'm not sure, but I have pretty sweepy quads from the top. 
and I do contribute that to not only the exercises I do, but the form and how I do it. So my suggestion is to try and create a somewhat of a decline between you and your thigh, rather than being above it too much, to create more tension in the upper quad. Some people will probably watch this and be like, that's bullshit. I don't know, I don't know if it is. For me personally, I feel it a lot more, so. You'll notice I just slightly elevate my hips and tilt back in order to create that uh, tension in the upper quad. Instead of sitting like how you're designed to, which is really braced and upright, when you're in that position, try and push the knees a little bit forward so your heels and feet get pushed behind you a touch. And also, almost contract your glutes a little bit so that you feel tension start to kick in on your upper thigh immediately. Now I'm in my position I like to be set in, where my lower back's actually slightly off the seat but my uh, glutes are tight and my hips are forward. Some leg extensions are designed to have that position from the start, but they're far in for you. I think the Flex Fitness one does that, but not many do. So you can, or you have to, to try and create that yourself in order to make it feel mechanically like that. Um, this is a great leg extension, but it doesn't offer that in itself, so you have to somehow create that. Yeah, the flex, the flex one, it literally has like a decline like that. I know I used it at Evans and it puts you in a position immediately, even when you're braced, where your upper quads are firing. Not a lot of leg extensions have that. Even though this does have a decline, it's something to do with how steep the decline is and how tilted the seat is. But on the back of that, something I wanted to say is that it may sound lazy to me, but I don't like to load this more than five plates because I don't like how you can't fit 20s on both. Um, so what I do in order to kind of counter that is, is again time under tension. That's another thing we can utilize. So I'll try to hold the contractions a bit longer on this type of movement to make less load feel like it's doing more. Uh, again, some people won't agree with that, but my methods have got me to where I am um, and I'm here to help you guys get to a similar level and it's worked for me. So anything I say in these videos is just from experience. It's not. It's not, you know, uh, Bible talk. It's not God's word, but it is something that's worked for me. So I'm just here to help. And hopefully you can take away some of these ideologies, ideas, whatever you want to call them, uh, apply them to your own training and see the benefit. I will say this, on leg extension, my working set's always a higher rep than it is on, say, a ham curl. Because the fact that you're hit, hitting the knee from the front, I think it's wise to consider doing slightly higher reps on a movement like this. So I actually like to shoot between 15 and 20 reps on my working sets um, because it just stops me getting sore knees. I've never had sore knees because of bodybuilding and I do contribute that to being a bit sensible when it comes to exercise like this. Lovely set, felt really, really good. Oh, about 20 reps, spot on. Well, if you're someone that primarily loads top pins, you can't accelerate out of the hole too quick. You'll know, like, it makes you feel like you're gonna swing your knees over the top of you. It could cause an injury. This is encouraging to, this, this encourages you to be able to get the lockout easy. So, when it reaches some point, it will actually shift and get lighter and throw the weight at you. So if you're not aware of that and you kick the extension up too quick and you've only loaded the middle uh, top pin, be careful you don't hyperextend the knee. So I'm going to do a set now where I've evenly split six plates between three and three. I know earlier I said you can't put 20s here and there. I didn't mean that, I meant there and there. <laughs> so anyway, so now I'm going to do the same form again, same control, just a little split between the two just to encourage those last few reps to get really short. As you notice on those last two reps or so, my knees didn't quite lock out. This should help me just achieve a little bit more lockout on those last reps that are crucial. Same kind of rep range, hopefully. I say hopefully, if I get less, that's really good because it means that fatigue's kicked in. You really do want to try and make yourself get less reps the more work you do because ultimately you're just trying to reach some sort of failure. So let's see what happens. Oh, two more. Ooh, one more. Oh yeah, fuck. Perfect. 
We've decided to do this with no hill elevation today after having good talks with Maddie, who is the powerlifting specialist. But bear in mind, today's about three exercises that will benefit your leg training. So, what we don't want to do actually is make this too quad focused today if it was your only squat variation. On a regular day when you're doing maybe six exercises for legs, of course, feel free, squat, ele um, elevate heels, focus on quads, because you're going to do a lot of counter work for the hamstrings and abductors, etc. Today, because we're limiting ourselves to three exercises, we're going to focus on trying to get as much load shared between all muscle groups on the legs. So, again, like Maddie said, we're treating this more like a power movement today. So we're not going to have our heels elevated and we're going to squat with a flat heel and drive through glutes, hams, everything, everything, you name it. So we'll see how it gets on because I'm not used to doing this. This is new for me. So this is, uh, if I fail, it's Maddie's fault. <laughs> Same principle, slowly warm up, no rush, one plate at a time. Don't kill yourself. We haven't got a sound. That's hard. But that's day one, that's what day one looks like. You guys have seen me squat silly numbers. And I tried to say someone on my Twitch last night. That doesn't happen all the time. <laughs> it's not an all year round thing. Everything's progressive, have to build back up to those kind of lifts. So that five for like 10 or 12, or whatever that was, I didn't count. It felt hard guys. But again, another reason for you to not quit because you've seen what I can lift at peak performance. So if you're doing five now, there's no reason why you can't do eight as well. I'd like to be back to six plates on this for 12s. I think the best I ever did was six for 16. That was a good set. But that was really good for where we're at. You know, like I say, we've just come out of a show. You know, body weight's at its lightest. Haven't eaten really well for a couple of weeks. Obviously, we've come off of, we actually came off everything one week out from the show because of traveling. We didn't want to risk having things with us and do stupid stuff. So the body's pretty much trying to get back to homeostasis. So I'll take that, I'll take that. We'll do, um, we'll do one more set like I've been doing on everything else with slightly less weight. We'll just do like four plates aside and just focus on getting a good set basically. So, but I'm happy with that. The new split is gonna be um, push, legs, pull, off, push, pull and leg. So I think what I'm gonna do, if you want the ultimate thickness and strength in your back, as sick as this sounds, you would do this and, and pull from the floor in the same session. So you do that every other spin. So you do no lower back loading on the other leg and back day. You just do direct work and then you save all your lower back loading for one day. You do hat filled squat and then you do conventional or stiff leg deadlift after. Imagine the stimulus on your back from that. Because my back right now worked hard on that. Um, but if you could diminish that frequency of targeting the lower back, you could probably go a bit harder on when that you do. Again, or you could subtract that intensity by two and have them separate. I, I think I'd rather have them all on one day and just really go to town. So once I get into the new groove, so when I get to the next, next leg day with Paul, I'll probably do these three exercises again and then I'll throw in a deadlift and then some like rows or something after, but a chest supported variation. And that's gonna help you get a thick back, I swear. So, nasty. Ooh. It was quite easy, but I got a stitch. <laughs> My breathing's still not right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right, let's head to the calves. Cheers, Tim. Thank you, brother. Thanks, man. Happy? Yeah, not too bad. Pretty happy. 50-50. Always could be better, but it was an improvement on last year, so. Of course, I heard the competition was very stiff. And obviously, you said you'd only 30 seconds or a minute. Oh, mate, yeah, it was very short. There's a lot of athletes, so they compressed a lot of the uh, times of us being on stage. When did you come back? Uh, I got back the Tuesday after, but I got a virus for a whole week when I got back. So I've been back here about three days now. So I'm trying to get back into it. Everything's hard work. Squatting's really on. Tim, thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Calf work normally three sets as opposed to two. Um, one feeler, and then once you've done the feeler, you know what your weight is. So we'll just do this one now, know what we're going to use, and then do three sets of the same weight. So, got 16th at the Olympia out of around 30 people. Obviously, in that show alone, it can be a disappointment because you're like at the halfway mark. There's a lot of people to beat you. But when you actually think about number one, getting to the Olympia, how did you get there? How many people did you have to go against to get there? Then how many people have tried to do a show this year and tried to get there? How many people have come really narrowly short and almost got there? You start to kind of reevaluate and consider how fortunate you are to do as well as you did. You think of the entire globe of bodybuilders and how good they are. And to be able to come away at the end of the year and say you're 16th in the entire world of, of professional bodybuilders. Whether you are or not, you are at the Olympia and that is ultimately your ranking for the year. It's not a bad feat. You know, at first I was like, very disappointed to show when you know you don't make the top 10. And then I was a little bit more disappointed that I didn't make top 15. There was a few people I thought I was ahead of. And then when the scores come back, I realized I wasn't. So initially I was obviously a bit, uh, a little bit down with the result. But then I look at who I managed to beat and a lot of them are number one friends of mine and they're people that have beaten me before. And they're people that won shows this year and beat a lot of incredible people. So a lot of us didn't get it right on the day. And that's to contribute to our place in a lot of the time. But still made it to the Olympia. Still represented our, you know, I say represented our country. Because like I say, I go to the Olympia and I always try to represent the UK. Um, that's, I'm very proud of doing that. And uh, yeah, we came away and we're inside the top 20 in the world. So we just have to work hard and improve on that. You know, currently, like I'm kind of expressing to you, I'm certainly not in a mind frame right now to look at the long term and be like, oh, I've got to do the work now to be, the, to be there. I'm not ready to get in the gym and do what I know I'm capable of in order to get there yet. And I also think it'd be foolish for me to come back in the gym already and try to be that. If I was trying to squat seven plates, deadlift seven, eight plates, bench five, six plates right now, immediately off the back of a, a prep, I'm asking for injury, I'm asking for mental fatigue, I'm asking for a short career, so I'm just trying to be sensible when letting my body tell me when. As you see, today we came in and we chose three specific exercises for legs, which to many of you is extremely low volume and probably not worth a workout. But I'll tell you now, that shit beat me up. Like, I'm tired after that. And that's all you can go by. How's your body feeling? How's it responding? How's it recovering? And as we said earlier, it's better to do less and be able to build up than do too much and have to scale back, so... We're just going to take it easy for the next few weeks, one day at a time, listen to the body, get the feedback, adjust as, when, as, as needed. Um, so yeah, like I say, three exercises for legs for now, throw in some calves, and I'll finish off with some biceps. But um, yeah, guys, like I say, don't feel pressured by what you see other people doing. There's a few genetic phenomenons out there that could do crazy shit all year round. We're not all like that. We're not all Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> I'll add, obviously for exercise three today it was a squat. As we actually previously discussed, it doesn't have to be that variation. You could do a hack. You could do uh, a super squat, a V squat. Ultimately anything that causes a lot of flexion in the knee and a lot of drive through the hips and glutes. So yeah, just a squat variation with a, a moderate stance with a lot of load, relative load will fit the bill for that particular movement. Um, we are fans of hack squat. I hack squat more than I three bar squat, but 
I like the carryover for strength for your back that you get from doing a barbell or a Hatfield. So I'm only doing that now to try and get my strength back up for other movements. But as we get deeper into the off season, that could be adjusted depending. And then I might focus purely on hacks. In a world full of complicated bodybuilding, I try to keep it simple. Sometimes even I, like, I go out there and I get brain scrambled watching other people's YouTubes. Feels like it's all just gone too far. So what I can promise you is if you want to learn simply and in a way that doesn't drive you stir crazy, come get involved on my channel, subscribe, hang around. There'll never be anything too crazy on here scientific wise because personally I don't enjoy that and I don't believe that it has to be that complicated. Um, so if you just want to learn, you want to see it for what it is, you want to see some experience and see how, how to, just come hang out. This channel's for you guys. So I'm going to wrap it up there. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Obviously ran through a few points on training, but also some things in life. Um, we'll be back anyway with another one tomorrow, which we'll bring out obviously later. And we'll do a little bit more talking, but happy new year. Uh, this is the first proper video of the year. And uh, I'll see you for plenty of content. Going to sort out a YouTube schedule. I promise myself I will where we have like official days of release. So I'll speak with Maddie and get that formulated. Uh, and then hopefully we do something like every Monday and Thursday, there's a, a brand new video and it may be a vlog video on the weekend or something. So I'll let you know. Um, also guys, come check out Twitch. Just upgraded some of the, uh, the streams software and stuff. So it's looking a bit better, a little bit more professional. Always enjoy you guys coming over there and having a chat. All the links are below. If you want to get involved in anything that I'm involved in, any affiliation stuff, just check out below, save some money on some things, get involved, and uh, I'll see you. I will, I'll see you tomorrow, but you won't see me for a few days. See you later, guys.